Well, it's the night before the big primary election in Oregon, and those of you living in Washington probably cannot wait for this to be over. I hear you. I think a lot of people in Oregon probably feel the same way. But you know what? In Clackamas County, it's likely going to take a little bit longer than usual for the votes to be tallied. There's a problem with the barcode printed on the ballots, and it's creating a ton of extra work. Inside a large room in Oregon City at Clackamas County Election Headquarters, it is a busy day. Thousands of ballots are opened by workers and prepared for counting by election machines. But there's a problem with nearly two-thirds of the ballots here, causing the machines to spit them out without counting them. The toner is not dense black, and the lines should be crisp lines, and they're a little blurred. So that is the problem. Too late to reprint and remail. And so what we are doing with each ballot rejected, we will be duplicating that ballot onto a new ballot that will be fed through the machine for counting. That's Clackamas County Clerk Sherry Hall. She's in charge of all things related to the election. Let's take a look. On each ballot, there are three barcodes. Each contains different information. One code holds the ballot's ID and ensures it's only counted once. Another shows the precinct where the voter lives, and another has the date of the election. When any of those is too blurry or not dense enough, the counting machine spits it out. We were putting the ballots through the tally machines, uh, a batch of 125 ballots at a time. And out of those, the machine was rejecting 70 to 80 of those ballots because of an unreadable barcode. The fix is being done by hand. A new uh, ballot is chosen for each one because there's all kinds in there. And the team of people doing that are two separate political affiliations. One person will take the um, machine unreadable ballot. The other person will take the new to be duplicated ballot. Uh, the one with the machine unreadable will read the voter choices to the other person who marks those choices on the new ballot. And when they're done with that piece, then they switch ballots and the uh, marked new ballot is read to the other person to make sure that it's the same exact votes that the voter put on their ballot. It's a tedious process that adds time to the entire production. Clackamas County added 37 more workers from other departments to help out. By our calculation, these barcode issues could add a couple of days to the effort to get a final tally from Clackamas County. But a change in when ballots have to be in, postmarked by 8 p.m. on Election Day, rather than actually arriving Election Day, will also stretch out the final count. For some voters, the problem adds to a feeling of distrust. And I just don't trust the elections to be fair. If it was a private industry, why wouldn't somebody proofread, we'll say, for example, what, what the ballots are, what they look like before they're ever sent out? But others, including Republican observer Linda Houlihan, feel the count is going just fine. I think they're doing an excellent job. I really think that they're trying to make sure that election integrity is, is um, fulfilled and that we shouldn't have to worry about what's happening with this process, that it's actually going well. Now, anytime there's a flaw like this in an election, it raises concerns over how secure our elections are. Oregon has been voting by mail for more than 20 years, and it's widely regarded as a secure system. Voter fraud is extremely rare. According to the Secretary of State's office in 2020, election officials reported 140 instances of potential voter fraud out of millions of votes cast. Only four of those were actually sent to the Department of Justice for potential charges. Two years before that, there were 84 reports of voter fraud and only two went to the Department of Justice. The Secretary of State's office says in the last 20 years of mail-in voting, there have been 38 criminal convictions for voter fraud in Oregon. That's a 0.00006% rate out of the 61 million votes cast over all those years. Still, misinformation runs rampant and people are concerned. A poll from the Oregon Values and Belief Center found about a third of Oregonians think there was significant voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Oregon Secretary of State Shamia Fagan said the state passed a law recently to protect election workers because they were getting so many violent threats from people who thought elections were being stolen. Another county clerk down in southern Oregon came to work on the day the presidential election was certified to find the words, 
bullet, next time bullets spray painted on the parking lot of the county clerk's office. That's simply unacceptable. And so we worked with Republicans and Democrats to pass the Bipartisan Election Worker Safety Act. I had clerks testify from around the state. And just to make sure that number one, some of their personal information will be exempted from public records, some of that personal identifying information, their addresses, et cetera. And also to actually increase penalties, uh, criminal penalties for harassment or threats towards Oregon's election workers. So let's take a look at what measures are in place to keep Oregon's election secure. First, the voting equipment is never connected to the internet. Also, Oregon performs post-election reviews after every election. In, that happens in all 36 counties, by the way. Oregon law also requires random sampling hand counts of ballots. And each county clerk is elected independently by their county to oversee elections. But if you still have doubts or if you know something that concerns you, someone may be violating election law, in your opinion, you can file a complaint with the state elections division. You have to do it in writing and it cannot be anonymous and you have to file it within 90 days of the election. While we're talking about election, Oregon voters, you have just over 24 hours now until your ballots need to be in the mail. Remember, Oregon now has a new postmark law, so you can still mail your ballot until 8 o'clock tomorrow night, technically, as long as it is postmarked which might be a little tricky at that hour because most post offices are going to be closed. In the past, you had to find a drop box by this point. It was too late to mail, but now as long as you get the ballot postmarked by tomorrow, it will count. So have you sent yours already? Well, we checked on voter turnout and right now it's amazingly low. According to data from the Oregon Secretary of State, only about 18% of people have returned their ballots as of this morning. That's about 533,000 ballots statewide. There are just under 3 million registered voters in Oregon. Of those ballots, about 24% of those are from Democrats, about 24% also from Republicans. The rest are from other political parties or unaffiliated voters. Let's take a look by county. Here's in the metro area, turnout is around 16%. That's Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties. In Marion County, it's higher, around 18%. The percentage is highest in the rural counties where there are fewer ballots to return, but a good number of people are getting them in. Grant County has the highest turnout in the state right now, around 34 percent, followed by Harney and Wheeler counties. So how are we comparing to past elections? Well, typically turnout for a primary and the general election is much higher on a presidential election year, and this is not one of those. This is what's called a midterm election year. During the last midterm primary in Oregon, that was 2018, just under 34% of people registered actually voted. Four years before that, it was just over 35%. But again, we're only at 18% turnout as of this morning, the day before the election. That means that we're gonna have to have a huge surge in votes that come in today and tomorrow in order to meet those past numbers.